So their confirmation of the men's singles match. Nian Tian Min, two straight games. Next up is Jan Jorgensen, the number three seed from Denmark. After that, we'll have mixed doubles, and then we go back to men's singles with world number one, Lee Chong Wei, silver medalist at the last two world championships. And will this be his year? from the fans here when Janor Jorgensen is announced on court. So the number three seed, Jan Jorgensen, the world number three, trying to become the third Dane uh, to win gold in the men's singles at the World Championships. The first, Fleming Delfts in 1977. The second, 20 years after that, 1997, Peter Rasmussen, uh, the left-hander. And now Jorgensen. Well, the hopes of the nation resting on his shoulders. My goodness, that's something that's a burden of expectation that you've had to shoulder. Shouldered for many years, Morton. Yes, and I must admit I failed. <laughs> <laughs> two, <laughs> silver, two silver medals, <laughs> failure. It yep. depends your definition of failure. <laughs> yeah, but in my book, I failed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you are I, I tough on yourself. Yeah, I was close. I was yeah. close twice. Yeah. Well, his opponent, um, Maxime Maurice of Belgium. Maurice, 99 in the world ranking. Well, as Jan Jorgensen, the Dane, enjoying his 23rd week in total as world number three. Two different spells. He's on a 19 straight week run. And the second spell of world number three. And of course, two-time winner this year because he won the European Championships. Gold medalist there in Kazan in Russia. And probably the best tournament win of his career so far, the Indonesia Super Series, Premier Super Series title that he won in Jakarta. So to his opponent, as I say, 99 on the world rankings, the 23-year-old from Belgium. Nine individual tournaments so far this year. The best has been a quarter-final at the Iceland International. Two last 16s, European Championships and Slovenia International. Incidentally, at those European Championships lost to Vladimir Ivanov, who went on to take a bronze medal and then in his doubles actually became the first ever men to win gold in European Championships when they took the men's uh, doubles. Ivanov and Sozanov, of course, that men's Ready doubles play. pair. So for Jan Jorgensen, well, last year in Guangzhou, he had bitter disappointment against the man we've just seen on court, Nguyen Tianmin. And it was a three-game marathon in the quarter-final. And Jorgensen fought his way back from 16-20 down in the third game. And we all thought he was on a roll, we all thought he was going to win it. And somehow, obviously he didn't, because Nguyen ended up as the bronze medalist. Ladies and gentlemen, on my left, Maxime Morils, Belgium. And on my right, Jan uh, Jürgensen, Denmark. Jan uh, Jürgensen to serve, 
Love all. Play. So the number three seed, Jan Jorgensen, against Maxime Morris of Belgium. Robinson, 26 years of age, born in Warburg in North Jutland. And he seems a bit of a character. Morton, what with his long stockings to keep his calf muscles warm and he's got a fair bit of body art and his ponytail. He looks a real character. He is a character. He loves it. Yeah. He loves it. He's, he's the new generation of people and he loves it, I'm telling you. He likes to be on. And, uh, but I think he, he's, doing in a, he's doing that Three, in a love. nice way. Mm. And I like that. Yeah. I've, I've coached him for four or five years and I know Jan very well. I think last year, 2013, was a, a fantastic year for him. He, we all, all knew that he had the capability of, of winning tournaments, but his highest ability and his lowest ability, his, I don't know what you call it, but the, the, the scope between the two is just too great. Yeah. You know, he could play, he could play Lee Chong Wei and almost beat him, or beat him. He can beat Lin Dan. Mm. And then the next day he could lose to his number 45 in the world yeah so that gap he's he's closed down very well last year in 2013 yeah much more consistent and very very much yeah and consistent on a high level yeah well of course he has beaten all those players you've just Bye. mentioned Lee Chong Wei uh, beat actually five years ago in the first round of the China Super Series has twice beaten Lin Dan most recently in the quarterfinal of the Japan Super Series yeah, this year yep and in Indonesia on his way to taking the title in Jakarta he beat Chen Long who of course is Thanks, number Silver. two seed here at these world two, championships five. so you're absolutely right he's proven himself capable of beating all of the top players he's just got to string it together yeah. And that's that's the difficult part. When you say string it together, do you mean round after round or yes. yeah. I I don't foresee that this will be any problem whatsoever. Um, but I think it two. is hugely important for Yan to stay as fresh as possible all the way through the tournament and therefore he's got to be extremely focused in every single match he's playing and not wasting one little bit of energy in any round because he's got to need it and use it at the end. Yeah. And that is actually Sam. something that you Sam. drew to our attention during the final of the Premier Super Series event in Jakarta because you liked the fact that he wasn't wasting energy celebrating after points and he was just focused in on much much more than yeah. what we've seen earlier yeah and I like that and he's not wasting physical or mental energy yeah do you know how his preparations for these world championships have been going because of course after winning in Jakarta Jan Jorgensen, he'd put so much effort into that, uh, felt he couldn't then go down to Australia for the yep. Australian Super Series event in Sydney. He withdrew from that, wanted to concentrate on the build-up to this event, and presumably it's all gone quite well, has it, his training? Um, I think so. I'm obviously not there every day, but, you know, the people I talk to, what I see when I meet them and so on, I haven't heard that Jan has had any injury problems, illnesses, whatever. It's, it's been a, a good steady training period and uh, obviously that's, I'm sure, has helped him a lot. Yeah. So it's over. Four, nine. On court, number three, mixed doubles. Yeah, it's 
silver and fourth clear. Beautiful shot. And they are facing from Austria. Three to the game interval with a seven point advantage. Uh, Jan Jorgensen. And just here showing one of, one of his weapons. Look at this, that one. Obviously, this is slow motion and you don't see the pace and power in it, but mm. the attack from that forehand side is really strong. Not a lot of players is having such a strong attack as what Jan has got from that position there. There is Kenneth Jonasson that we were talking about a little earlier, former world number two. Yep. Please welcome the technical officials of Court Number Four. Goals one. Well, it just shows you Gold can't one. tell by Twenty body seconds. language all the time with you coaches because <laughs> <laughs> hands on hips there. Yeah. Kenneth Jonasson looked as if he wasn't too happy, but I'm sure he must be absolutely delighted with his man at the moment. I'm sure he is. I, I think for Kennedy, it's really to keep Jan on track mentally, not, as I say, waste too much energy when it's not needed and all that, uh, just to keep him focused, survive round after round uh, as easily as possible, again, inverted commas. Um, that's what Kenneth's job is all about, I think. Keep him happy, make sure that uh, he's eating and drinking well. You know, it sounds really silly and there's not, nothing to do with kids. Just check. Yeah. Just make sure. Mm. You know, and the, one of the easy ways to do it is, oh, are we going to have lunch today? Sit and chit-chat. Yeah. Say hi. And how is life? And are you OK? Mm. Make sure you get something to drink. And that's that's what I mean when when you know the, the coaches when when they they work with the best players they really have to get under the skin they have to know them they have to know them so well and in order to to know what to say and what you can't say especially the latter what buttons to to push and which ones not to push. And that's where you have to, to know your players so well. And that's why I say, you know, when, when I was a coach, that you, you laugh and cry with your, your players. Mm. Oh. And here we saw that awesome attack again. From the forehand side, yeah. yeah. But the way he can twist his body in behind it. You don't see anyone, even, even Chong Wei, when you look at it, he's jumping out and played. Uh, the forehand shot, and normally he plays it across the offside. It's a very good shot, but he doesn't force his body behind it. That's what Jan is doing, and that's why that attack down the line is so good. So it's Tom Wayne just using his arm then, rather yeah. than his whole body yeah. movement. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's accurate and he's sharp on it, but he doesn't generate the same power as what Jan is doing on it because Jan is getting the whole body behind mm. it. Service over, 14, 8. Another one of the players serving for hand serve. Yeah, good de deception from Wilkinson. You know, the more 15, I watch Maurice, eight the more I can understand why he's been national men's doubles champion. He's uh, a strong athlete, isn't he? He's powerfully built. And he doesn't seem to have the same sort of agility as Jorgensen, the quickness of... No, he doesn't cover the court as well as what Jan is doing. Jan's, no. uh, Jan's push-off is a lot stronger. Mm. I know I've said this before, but we always used to joke with Jan and say, you know, he's in the wrong sport because he's a very, very good runner. What middle distance? Middle distance. Yeah. Track and field. I'm telling you, mm. you cannot follow him. Mm. That sounds like a voice of experience. <laughs> I was biking next to him. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> And sometimes I was, I was running with him, but no way, he's so quick. Mm -hmm. That smash goes 16, just long.
Service over. 10, 16. Service over. No, just apologises for the luck of the net cord. 10. Over. 11, mm, it just seems to me as if Jorgensen has lost 12, a bit of focus. 17. Smash the body smash. I thought so more he's particularly well to defend. He couldn't defend a second one. Oh. Mm, that's gone wide as well. Service over 13 18. That's a nice, good run of points 15, here 18. for Maxim. So Very sharp 15. at the net is Jorgensen. That's proved by that rally. Oh. Blistering smash straight down the line. 20, game point, 15. So game point opportunities. Number three seed from Denmark, and Game. that goes wide, and he converts on his first opportunity. 21 15 to Jan Jorgensen. First game on by Jan Jorgensen, 21 15. A little over 13 minutes for that opening game. Closer scoreline than at one stage I thought that the the game deserved. Yes, Jan had uh, one of these spells where he was not really, as you say, focusing, mm -hmm. and he yeah he lost focus. He lost. Uh, Three, four, five points in a row, something like that. Five, I should think. And um, and that's you know the yen we saw in the past, uh, but it doesn't make any difference here. The the difference in standard is is too great. It would not face him really, but um, obviously that's not something he can afford playing better players. Well, he looks fairly relaxed Goals as Jan Jorgensen at the moment, number three Goals seed from Denmark. Seconds. His opponent, Maurice from Belgium. Second game. Well, Morton, I appreciate your point Five. that at number three in the world, Jan Jorgensen, in all seriousness, ah. can't see him really being troubled by the player ranked number 99 in the world but from Maurice's point of view 
what does he say to himself here at the start of the second game? He's obviously played himself into the match. Any nerves that initially he had have dispersed. If he can't beat his opponent, so, so what far, would you as a coach be looking for your player to do in, and learn from this experience? Obviously, the immediate goal would be to get as many points as possible. I think 15 in the first game was really good. So could he get another 15 here? I think that's that's a fine target to set. Um, but but once again, I think if you look at the at the game, the game plan, the opportunities, Maxime Reels have to 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 start attacking and and really um, make his presence felt. He's got to go in there and he's got to apply maximum pressure as what he can do yeah he must try to shake up his opponent maybe as i say jan has won the first game here but it's a new game go in there so and so really try to see if you can shake it up i normally Three, say to two. my players that you know even if you only got five minutes of petrol left in the tank you've got to use those five minutes the best possible way yeah so if you can get a lead of eight one and then out of petrol it's better than losing 15-8, but being 5-1 down, 10-3 down, and so on, because you want the petrol to last for as long as possible. Mm. So what I don't know if, if that makes sense. It makes perfect sense, and what an interesting philosophy. I like that. But it's, that's, that's what you have to do yeah. in my book. Because at least if you, if you got the five minutes and you made the best of it and you're 8-1 up, you shaking him. They're shaking him. Yeah. You, you're there. You you made your present felt. Mm. You don't do that by doing respectable scores. And when I used to play, I, I always hated when players were sort of taking everything they had into one patch, and then say, okay, next ten minutes, I'm just going to give it everything I have. After ten, I've got nothing left, but at least those ten minutes. That was worrying times, because mm. if they get through, if they get the points, if they get the lead, have they got more than 10 minutes? Mm. That's what you keep thinking then. Yeah, as an opponent. As an opponent. Yeah. So, so for me, it, it's, it, it was very... I, I loved when players were saying, you know, they were just going for respectable scores. Fine, I'm happy. We can mm -hmm. play, don't worry. Huh. That's a nice smash. And, and the... The way I look at Maurice from Belgium, you know, I alluded to it in, in the first game, he's a, a big, strong athlete, and, and to me, he physically looks as if he'd be more suited to men's doubles. So why not use that attacking capability and that explosive power that doubles players use, especially men's doubles? You see these big jumps in the air the whole time, don't you, in men's doubles, and yet we haven't really seen any of that. And I, I've just assumed in my own mind it's because Jorgensen hasn't allowed him to do that. But you're saying there are opportunities. He yeah. should he should do it. Yes. Ah. Well, this is a run of seven no. straight points Good. now for Jorgensen. So it's over. Three, nine. Oh, that's good play. Yeah. So it's over. Ten, three. So an eight-point advantage for Neil Robinson at the make game interval of game number two. Yeah, the little hold and flick, the deception forcing Maurice to play 
play that high back and that's always a sign a player is in trouble. I don't want to labour the point, Morton, but you've just got my mind spinning now with... <laughs> it's brilliant. You know, I'm thinking about the marathon runner, the fun runner, that is. Yep. You know, and some of my friends have, have done the London Marathon and they all talk about hitting the wall yes. at about 21 miles, something yep. like that. Yes, been there. And, and then they say to me, but somehow, even though the lungs are exploding, your legs feel like lead, you find the energy from somewhere else. Yeah. And that's the feeling. Give it everything. Oh. Yeah. You think you've only got five minutes of petrol left, give it everything, and you 12, might find some three. more from somewhere else. Absolutely. I, I so agree with it. Yeah. Obviously, this is under the, the old scoring system, but, you know, I always said that you are most tired when? When you play a singles match. When are you most tired? Under the old scoring system. End of the second game. Everybody else, everybody else is saying, oh, no, no, you, you're too tired for the third game and all that. You feel the maximum pain in the end of the second because you get a five minute break and you can recover. So it was all about getting to that break. If you were one game down and, and you, you said, OK, I can't win in, in, um, in two, I have to win in three, but I can't face to do it, never mind. Don't think about that third game. You will find the strength and the energy to do it. Just see if you can get this second game. Mm. And that's another way of breaking it up. Yeah. That's obviously the old scoring system, but yeah. you can still use some of it. Yeah, use the psychology. Yeah. It's gone wide. Save yourself on 5, 14. That's a super angle. Crisp shot there, played with deception. Service over. Yes. Fifteen five. Fifteen five. <laughs> that was neat. Mm. Obviously, you have to go over first, but... My goodness, didn't he put some reverse slice on that? He did. But he can only do that again because he's behind it. Mm. You can't do it with just with your arm outside your body. You can't do it. You've got to get behind it so you have the, f the shuttle in front of you. Seven, 15... Watch the racket head here. Seven. Yep. Flicks over the top of the shuttle, bringing it down so steeply. Oh, that was desperation backhand. <laughs> That's the <a> word. <laughs> Seven. I've tried a few of them in my time. Yeah. Pirouette, whatever you call it. <laughs> Full pirouette, yes. <laughs> I did ballet when I was a little girl. Okay. Yeah, I loved it. Oh. And your tutu, whatever it's called. Absolutely. <laughs> but in growing to almost five foot ten, I don't think I was cut out to be a ballerina. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you played beautifully badminton. So so. Don't you worry Eight. about that. 17. Ah. Oh, it's just wide. That's a pity. Save yourself on. 18. Eight.
That oh, good. yes. Now, that's what you were looking Sorry, for earlier, so wasn't it? Yeah, but it should have been two no. all in the second game. Exactly. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Rather that than now, as I say, it, now yeah. it's just respectable scores. Exactly. Jorgensen just two points away from replacing the so second so round. Nine. Oh, that's nice. So that's the kind of shot you play when you've got the confidence, when you're not under pressure. I guarantee you, Jan wouldn't play that shot had it been like 18 or he would never have played that shot. It's only because he's on top, he's comfortable. Then he can play it. Yeah. Oh, he's still got another 10 match point opportunities. Mm. It's nice. Yeah. Too little, too late, though. So. Uh, he got very well around it and play that around the head shot rather than play the backhand and uh, as again once again here but that's the kind of energy that's when we talk about the five minutes of petrol you got that's when you've got to use it for to get around those kind of shots and add on that pressure and as you say now it's just uh, too little too late Nice. Very nice. It's long. Oh, it's, it's just gone long. long. Yeah. Uh, it's a pity. Yeah. Uh, look, that is nice sportsmanship at the end from Jan Jorgensen. The fans here respond to him. But I do like to see the players congratulate opponents before any celebration nice with the fans or coaches. Yeah, and that's respect. Yeah. You can't enjoy a victory and that moment of victory unless you've had an opponent on the other side of the net. And you must thank them for their part in your joy and your exuberance and happiness for winning any match, any sporting contest. You can tell just by the way the Dane is moving, he's just oozing confidence with every shuttle he strikes. Yeah, it was a good last rally, wasn't it? It was. Very nice. And I thought that was perfect, but yeah. it was called long. Yeah, it's just long, I think. Yeah. So the victory to Jan Jorgensen. Two straight games conserving energy as you suggested he should. 21-15, 21-11. In three minutes shy of the half hour mark.
So our next match on.